All right, my dears, today we're going to do a lot of stuff. We're going to focus on core. And in particular, we're going to focus on the core that's below the belly button. So kind of our low abdominals. I'm trying to get a decent picture here. That's as good as we're getting today. All right. So we're going to focus on our low abdominals. And that work is um, specific. And the slower we move, the better. And it's a lot of drawing your awareness there. And it gets easier over time to really feel the different muscles engage. <clears throat> Whenever we talk about core, I like to bring into our awareness that our core is where our power resides. So if we're thinking about our Manipura chakra, the solar plexus, right at the center of the core, just above the belly button, it really deals with our relationship to power and power over, which is always domination, power under, which is always oppression, and power in alignment with our truth. And that deeper truth that sometimes we really wanna avoid, get out of here truth. I don't wanna look at this truth right now, right? But that truth is ever present, no matter how much we want to avoid or distract ourselves from. We can think of it like the sun is always shining even on these cloudy days where we can't see the sun. There's like the veil of weather in between us and the sun. There can be a veil in between us and our truth. And so my idea, and the only reason why someone like me would ever wanna do core strengthening exercises is to get to our deeper truth, is to have a deeper awareness and realization of what it is we are here on this earth at this time in this body to learn. When we think about the core that's below the belly button, we're getting into the second chakra or svadhisthana, the sacral chakra. And that is our relationship with creativity, but also intimacy, sexuality, addiction. All of those things lie in the second chakra, which is the element of water. And so, the play between the second and the third chakra, the play between power over wanting to control, wanting to control. Why are we wanting to control? Because we want to feel safe. At our core, there's a, a little girl, a little boy, a little being inside of us that wants to feel safe. That's where the second chakra can come in. Second chakra is very, um, the element of water can be our, our deepest desires. Also, like I stated in the realm of addiction or habit, what we do to feel sweetness or joy, not always the best choice for us. It might be a distraction to our deeper truth but we're seeking that joy. So can we have compassion and empathy that there's this being inside of us that wants to feel safe and wants to seek joy or pleasure. And that that is kind of a, an innate human quality. We don't seek harm, most of us. You know? We don't seek to be uncomfortable, most of us. <clears throat> so a yogi, or anyone on a spiritual path seeks to be in discernment of that. Know when you're seeking pleasure almost hedonistically or when you're follow, falling into patterns that could hide you from your truth. Wow. And it takes great courage to make ourselves uncomfortable on purpose, to discover those deeper truths. So I wanna locate myself for a moment as a white woman in this culture. I have been made to feel comfortable most of the time. Like the world kind of 
attends to my comfort in a way. My tears are attended to, my comfort's often attended to. I can remember in, in doctor's offices complaining about any kind of pain and, and you know, wanting to give me a pain pill or you know, something to sedate or something to make the pain go away. Like that's always been my experience is people tend to attend to my pain. And that has not been useful in trying to reveal my deeper truths. I cannot be comfortable and grow in deeper truths. And so I have a tendency or a habit to want to be comfortable. And my mind is clever. And so I have many ways I distract myself to want to bring that comfort. And so if we can admit that, if we can see that, then we can attend to it and choose to be a little bit uncomfortable. You know, maybe at least a little at first and then maybe over time kind of greatly uncomfortable so that we can discover our deeper truths. And so that's kind of the message I wanna bring to us as we do this core work today, because a lot of people don't wanna stay with core they either get bored or it hurts. They don't want to do it. Um, we want to avoid it. And so if we can actually move towards something as simple as core work, where, you know, we're not going to injure ourselves. Um, we're not going to be so uncomfortable that harm could be caused. Yeah. If we can kind of strengthen that muscle of moving toward discomfort, uh, my invitation is that we can then start to move toward our deeper truth we can start to move toward our uncomfortable habits. We can see more about ourselves, where we are being complacent, apathetic, lazy, even all these words that we'd rather not associate with ourselves. And then where we might be making ourselves way too busy to avoid our deeper truths. You know, that's the other side of that coin. We avoid by doing, 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 and we can say, but look how productive I am, but we're still avoiding. So there's a space in the middle of that that takes great courage to get to, really looking at our relationship with power. True power is power in alignment with all other living beings. It's not oppressing anybody, <clears throat> dominating anybody. And it's also not giving our power away to things like addiction. All right, so let's let that land in our body. I feel energy at my belly, even talking about that. So just notice where you might feel energy in your body. And if it's safe enough, we'll close our eyes. And take a few moments just to notice our breath. And we'll just sit in the silent meditation today for a few minutes, letting that land and just noticing what we feel, where our breath is.
So today we're going to do a, a mudra that I learned from um, Sianna Sherman, one of my friends and teachers. It's one of my very favorite mudras. It's called Abhaya Hrittaya. Abhaya, have no fear. Hrittaya, root of the heart. So this is known as fearless heart mudra. We're going to take our hands in front of our heart like Anjali mudra and then cross the right hand over the left so that the back of your hands are together. Yeah. And then this right pointer finger, connect it with the left pointer finger. The middle finger, connect. Skip over the ring fingers and connect your pinky fingers. And then the ring fingers and the thumbs come together. And we draw the whole mudra right there at the root of the heart. The one that we call on for great courage and steadfastness and protection in the Hindu pantheon is the goddess Durga. And today we're just going to uh, chant her seed sound, which is doom, doom, like a heartbeat, yeah? And hold this fearless heart mudra. Doom, 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 doom. Dum dum, 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 dum dum. Dum dum, 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 dum dum. We'll release the mudra. Cue up our playlist. Profits. And we'll push play in three, two, one. Push play. Come on to our backs. As you come onto your backs, we're going to bring the soles of the feet together and the knees open. And we'll begin to lift the knees toward each other in this pattern. Lift, lift, open, open. Lift, lift, open, open, but then start to engage your belly. Lift, lift, open, open, lift, lift, open, open. In fact, draw your belly in so much as you continue to do this motion that you feel the muscles below your belly button almost like they're trying to draw the front of your hip bones toward one another. Do you feel it, Kanti? Yeah. So continuing to really bring it into the core. It might feel like a cramp when we first start doing it. Yeah. Lift, lift, open, open. Now pretend your, your legs weigh a hundred pounds each. Yeah. So they're really heavy and you have to Draw your belly in to protect your low back, to lift, lift, open, open. Just imagining that, can you feel it even more? I know I can. Keep your low back rooted and grounded to the floor. Lift, lift, open, open. Lift, lift, open, open. And continue, like, see if you can lift them all the way up. So lift halfway up, all the way together. 
halfway open, all the way open, halfway up, all the way together, halfway open, all the way open, and go in that pattern, but with the belly so strongly engaged that you feel the low belly doing it. So if I watch Conti, I can see it. <sighs> yeah. I can see those muscles below the belly button engaging, like trying to pull the front of the hip bones toward one another. So we're gonna do this for about two more minutes, yeah? So trying to stay with what's not comfortable, not necessarily easy. Our mind might even tell us it's boring. The mind's very clever. The way the mind distracts is, is really, you know, like PhD level. So we'll stay till the end of this song. Continuing to notice like how much more could you even do this? Like how much more could you engage your core? How much more could you feel the low belly muscles taking over? It's not even about the inner thighs. Great, and now keep your knees open. You might have your arms at your sides. It's probably more challenging if they're under your head. Try to lift your butt in this position. And your butt might lift one inch, yeah? It might not be very high at all, but we're gonna lift until we hopefully can feel a little bit of a quiver. And we'll just notice the inner thighs, but notice the glutes here, start to squeeze the pelvic floor, but then notice your belly, draw your belly in and really feel like this is actually being powered by the core. So this is trying to get into those muscles that are stabilizing that we tend to avoid because our other muscles are stronger, yeah? So we're staying for five, four, Three, two, one, bring the butt down, let the knees open and just pause there for several breaths. Just pause there. And then you're gonna sit on the back of your hands and bring your legs up to the sky. So draw your belly in, lower your right leg toward the earth, hover, draw the belly strongly in, lift the leg back up, switch sides. So as we do this, we're really trying to pause, hover, engage the core more than you even think, and then lift the leg back up. So the more we slow things down with core work, the better. So you just go side to side several more times, finding that pause, finding the engagement to lift the leg up. So it's really easy to lift the leg with the strength of the legs. Imagine that your leg is a hundred pounds and you have to lift it by engaging the core. and then both legs, and it might only be halfway or less. See how far you can go with it feeling safe for your low back and the belly is still engaged, really engaged, yeah? And then lift it back up and try to lift your butt up off your arms, yep. And then lower, draw the belly in, lift and pause because you could use momentum. Try to lift your butt, yep. Lower. Lift, pause, lift the butt. Good. Lower. Lift, 
lift the butt. Now really challenging, remove your hands, lower, lift, lift the butt. Okay, lift your arms up to the sky, lower, lift, pause, draw the belly in, lift the butt. Good, lower, lift, lift the butt, lower, lift, lift the butt. Mm -hmm. One more, lower, lift, lift the butt. Okay, bring your feet down, bridge pose. So as we come to bridge pose, you might interlace the fingers behind your back, or you might grab the edges of your mat, or you might have your hands, arms like robots where the triceps are down and the fingers point up. And we're gonna see how much it helps to wiggle our shoulders together to try to get that lift, yeah? So this can actually be a, a little bit of a stretch of the core. And then bringing the butt down, straightening the legs, point your toes. Curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Look at your feet. Reach for your feet. See if you can turn your palms up and see how much with the feet down you can lift the shoulders off the floor. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then start to lift the feet a little and see how much you can lift the shoulders. And we're trying to use less momentum. So it's really hard. Yep. So maybe you come to full boat or maybe it's not. Like for me, it's not. Yeah. Lower down. Yeah. And then from here, without momentum, without force, how much can you reach up? It might just be a tiny bit. Yes. Reach and lift. Yes. Reach and lift. Oh, yes. Yes. And then come down, draw your knees in. So we're gonna do the side boat, which I find, again, I know I use momentum. Yeah. So we're gonna try to do it without momentum today, which might not look as cute, but it really gets those muscles, yeah? So point your toes, legs are straight, curl head, neck and shoulders up, palms up, come to the right side, and then try to, yes, Conti, come up. And then lower down, stay at that side. We're going to do three times. Up. Yep, good. Lower down. Up. Great. Come back to center and rest for a minute. Mm -hmm. It's hard, right? Super hard. So we're going to come to the left side. And without momentum. So it's way more challenging to not use momentum. To come up. Great. Great. Three times, lower down, come up, lower down. I know, come up, okay, and then rest, rest. So why I'm having Conti do this, honestly, is because of patterns, right? Patterns and habits that we get into that we, we have to take it back down to the lowest thing sometimes before we go up because we can do these kind of poses that look more fancy, but we're getting there in a way that is a habit. Compensation. <laughs> oh dear. <Everybody's> doing <laughs> she said compensation. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> All right, over on hands and knees. <laughs> Terrible. And then we're going to come to a flat back. Reach your right arm forward and your left leg back. And we're going to hold. Lean toward the left. Take your left outer hip down. Yes. Pause. Notice the compensation here. So I can see her left hip rising up. Yeah. Take that left outer hip down. Yes. And so it's rising up. Take it down. Shoo. Yeah. 
Take your right arm out to the right, left leg out to the left and hold and move toward the left, yes. So that left hip is up a lot, taking the left outer hip down a little and moving left a little. Mm -hmm. So taking it out of the compensation and into the core, her core should be on fire at this point. Take it toward the left, left outer hip down. Reach the right arm forward, left leg back. Move left, take that left outer hip way down. There it is. Take a deep breath in, elbow toward knee. Lengthen. Take the left outer hip down, move left. Good. Elbow toward knee. Lengthen. Oh, yes, exactly. Elbow toward knee. One more. Lengthen. So good. Do you feel the difference? Elbow toward knee. And then come back to hands and knees. Cow cat a few times. Cow cat a few times. So when we stabilize the core and we, you know, I, I hate the word cheat in yoga because cheat doesn't apply, but compensate is a better word, right? The stronger muscles take over. And how does that play out in our life? What, like the stronger side of my personality might take over, take up all the space. And so then that's a great, clever technique of avoiding the parts of my personality that I'd rather not see and certainly don't want anyone else to see. Gross. Left arm forward, right leg back. Lean right, right outer hip down. Uh -huh. Pause. Feel. Notice if the right outer hip wants to come up, bring it down. Lean right. Mm -hmm. So even in every inhale, I can see her hip going up. Yeah. So maybe every exhale, folks, we think the right outer hip down, move to the right. Mm -hmm. Yep, really good. Mm -hmm. Right leg out to the right, left arm out to the left. And now the hip is gonna go on and go way up. That's what it does to compensate. Move toward the right, take the right hip down just a little, even if you have to bend your knee. Yeah, yeah. Feeling into the core. So she should feel, you should all feel the core, not just the belly button, but the, the sides, right? The sides. Great, reach forward, right outer hip down, move to the right, elbow toward knee. Lengthen, right outer hip down, elbow toward knee. One more, lengthen, right outer hip down, elbow toward knee, and then two more on your own actually. Yes. Rotating my inner thigh up in order to get yes, the, the right one. Uh -huh. So she said, I'm almost rotating my right inner thigh up. And that's actually another really good cue. And then hands and knees, cow cat. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and then come onto your belly when you're ready. Come onto your belly because she said, rotate the inner thighs up. This is another good pose to understand what that means. So we're going to move toward locust pose. So at first the hands are going to come down and the palms are going to turn up by your butt. Mm -hmm. And then bring your feet together, your ankles toward each other. So like for my body, my feet don't touch, no worries about that. But think about spinning the inner thighs up. So if both inner thighs spin up, the outer hips rotate down. Can you feel that? Yeah. And then reach down like you're going to reach for your feet. Keep your feet down and lift up the chest and the head and see how much of the upper back can come up. And we're reaching, reaching and spinning the inner thighs up and the outer hips down, lift the feet. And then reach. Yes. 
and lift, reach and lift, keep spinning the inner thighs up, the outer hips down. Shoo, and rest, yeah, rest. And then interlace the fingers behind your tail if possible. And then same thing, keep the feet down, inner thighs spin up, outer hips spin down toward the mat. Inner thighs spin toward the sky, outer hips toward the mat, lift the chest first and try to keep outer hips down, inner thighs up, lift the feet. Yep. So this is actually core strengthening as well, because the core is not just the belly. It's also the inner leg line, which is really engaging as the inner thighs spin up. It's like a hugging to center before you lift, a lengthening and a lifting. And notice your inner ankle bones. Yeah. And hug those toward each other the best you can, even spinning the inner thighs up. It's all very challenging, right? When we slow it down and do it more atomically aligned, anatomically aligned. Okay, come down. Oh, my goodness. Come to hands and knees. Imagine you're gonna draw your knees toward your wrists and your wrists toward your knees. Knees toward your wrists, wrists toward your knees, but you won't move because you're on a sticky mat, draw your belly in. Feel your shoulder blades broaden. You might start to quiver and shake here. Yeah, you might start to quiver and shake here. Maybe, and this would not be me, but might be Conti, tuck your toes under and lift your knees one inch, one inch. Yep. And then pull knees toward wrist, wrist toward knees. Keep broadening the shoulder blades. Yes, Conti, so good. Keep feeling those outer, um, you know, the muscles that try to draw your shoulders away from your ears, but on the outside. Yep. Yep. And then come down, child's pose. Ooh, tapas, tapas. What does tapas mean? It's not just the little plates that we eat. You know? Tapas is the fire of our practice. The fire of staying with something that is not comfortable. That's all sacred will, right? Especially those of us, again, I'm speaking from the location as a white woman, those of us who don't have to be uncomfortable, it's valuable to be uncomfortable once in a while and to feel our resilience. If you have an identity where you have to feel your resilience just to exist in the identity you have, maybe this isn't as useful for you. I don't know because I am speaking from my location. All right, so we're going to come to forearm plank. Now, forearm plank, I'm going to have her lower her butt. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite you to spin your inner thighs up here and your outer hips down, but not have your butt go up in the air. To push in enough where your shoulder blades are broadening. And then to imagine you're gonna draw your elbows towards your feet, your feet towards your elbows. Staying for five big breaths here. Every exhale, draw the belly in in the front. Feel the front of the hip bones move toward each other. The low belly engages. Feel the inner thighs spin up. Feel the outer hips go down. Feel the feet and the elbows move toward one another. Feel everything hug center. The fire of your practice. Draw your belly in, Conti, push into the earth so that your shoulder blades broaden. Yes, yes, stay with it. Five, four, three, two, lift your butt, walk your feet towards you, dolphin pose or forearm dog. Stay here for five breaths, strong today. Now notice the shoulders. We also had shoulder stabilizing requests, core, shoulders, hips. We're getting all of it, all of it. Who'd think this could possibly be a resting pose, yeah? Come back now to forearm plank. Walk back. 
Okay, pushing in, feeling those shoulder blades broaden. So good. Feeling the inner thighs spin up. See if maybe you can lift your right heel in line with your butt. Yes. Keep feeling both thighs spin up. Keep feeling that right outer hip go down. Yes, draw the belly in. Feel like your shoulder blades are broadening. Feel like you're going to draw your left foot and your elbow toward one another. Put that foot down. Lift the left leg up. Try not to pike the butt. Yes. So left outer hip goes down. Draw the belly in. Both inner thighs spin up. Push into the shoulder blades. Broaden. Oh my goodness. Put the foot down. Walk the feet forward. Dolphin. Butt goes to the sky. <sighs> Tapas. That sacred fire. The fire of our sacred will the burning zeal for our practice. Why? Because it helps us to feel our resilience. It helps us to feel our strength. It helps us to feel the will to live, honestly. All right, knees down, child's pose. Always important to rest, but to rest just long enough so that we are feeling fueled up to keep going. Downward facing dog. Right leg goes high. Take your right outer hip down. Draw your knee in toward your belly, chest or nose and hover. Take the knee slightly to the right, slightly to the left, toward your nose. Slightly right, slightly left, toward your nose. Slightly right, slightly left. Toward your nose, toward your nose, toward your nose. Step the foot forward. Dip the hips, lift the heart, draw the right hip back. So continue to draw the right hip back. Lift your right arm to the sky. See if your left palm can come to the earth. Draw your right hip back. See if maybe you can step to side plank on the left, spinning the back heel down, bringing that right leg either up or stacked or like tree. Keep the hips from falling back. Draw the belly in. Plank. Push in here to feel the shoulder blades broaden. Nice. Draw the belly in, spin your inner thighs up. Shift forward onto your toes. You know, knees could come down for this. Lower one inch. two inches, three inches, four inches, pause, chaturanga. Draw your belly in, cobra pose. Inhale here, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, take your left outer hip down. Draw the knee in toward your belly, chest or nose. Take the knee slightly left, slightly right, toward your nose. Slightly left, slightly right, toward your nose. Slightly left, slightly right, toward your nose, toward your nose, toward your nose, step the foot forward. Draw your left outer hip back. Lift your left arm to the sky, right hand palm down if possible. So this could always be on a block. And then think about where you're going, side plank on the right. Lifting that left leg up, left hip moves forward. Belly and ribs draw in, nice Conti. 
Nice. Yep. So it's a whole new thing of how you're going to get your balance without compensating with the hip going back. Yep. So good. Plank. Push in, feel your shoulder blades broaden, feel your inner thighs spin up, feel the outer hips go down. Shift forward onto the toes. Knees can come down, bend your elbows one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, chaturanga, cobra, downward facing dog. About five breaths here in down dog. And then just because you might be craving it with all of this stuff, shift high on the balls of the feet, bend the knees, walk or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Mountain pose. So it's okay to have craving, have desire. It's okay to intentionally invite that in sometimes. It's not okay when it controls you. Yeah. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Chaturanga Dandasana. Cobra or up dog. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, bend the knees, walk or hop to the top. Halfway lift, forward fold. Rise up, inhale, mountain pose. Four more, inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, walk or hop to the top. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale, rise, inhale, mountain pose, exhale, arms up, inhale, fold forward, exhale, halfway lift, inhale, chaturanga, exhale, cobra or up dog, down dog, take a deep breath in, exhale, bend the knees, walk or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Mountain pose. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog, five breaths, five breaths. So I know my personality and what I love to do and what I don't love to do in yoga. And likely that Surya A would have felt like a breath of fresh air to me. Yeah, I'm able to move. I don't have to hold stuff so long. I crave that. Yeah, it's harder for me to hold. Yeah. And so how is that reflected in our personality? Do we want to power through things, right? Is it harder for us to hold a level of discomfort? Do we want to fix or solve things? Yeah. Walk or hop to the top. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Rise all the way up, inhale. Palms pass through the heart. Mountain chair pose. So what happens when we start to sit in discomfort? Where does our mind go? Do we want to fix or solve? Like I'm addicted to crossword puzzles, right? And I do them on my phone all the time. I like to solve stuff. I like to put things in its place in my mind because when they're not in their place in my mind, I feel unsafe. I feel I don't like chaos. It makes me feel uh, anxious and anxious is uncomfortable for me, yeah? 
Is it appropriate to sometimes sit in the discomfort to know you can survive it? It's not harmful, it's uncomfortable. Right now I'm having a discussion with my child River about the difference between being uncomfortable and unsafe. We throw around the word unsafe a lot. Is it unsafe or uncomfortable? Inhale here, fold forward over your legs. Halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga maybe. Cobra to up dog. Downward facing dog. Right leg lifts, take the right leg out to the right. Bring your right outer hip down, draw your belly in. Hug both arms in towards center. Lift the leg all the way back up. Step the foot forward all the way up. Lift the left leg up to the sky, standing splits. Take the left outer hip down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. Step back, crescent lunge. Take your right outer hip back. Draw your ribs and belly in. Interlace the hands behind your tail. So in this bind, squeeze your shoulder blades together. This is challenging, yeah? From here with these hands, airplane. Lift that left leg, trust. Left outer hip down. Uh -huh. Draw your belly in. Left outer hip down. Reach your arms forward. Draw your left knee up, stand up. Straighten the left leg out. Both feet to the floor, chair pose. How much harder is it if I don't talk? There's no distraction. Is it harder? Is it easier? What if I shut the music off? <laughs> I won't, because it's rude. What I notice about my practice is if it's completely quiet and I only have my thoughts, it's so much harder because I like to dissociate and be in the song or any other distraction that I can possibly muster to not feel. Is that true for you? What if you dropped your butt one inch, two inches? Three inches, four inches. Fold forward over your legs. Shh. Halfway lift, chaturanga. Cobra or up dog, down dog. Left leg lifts, take the leg out to the left, follow it with your weight. Bring the left outer hip down. Mm -hmm. Hug your arms in. Lift the leg back up. Step the foot forward, lift your right leg up, standing splits. Take the right outer hip down. 
You open less on this side, right outer hip down. Mm -hmm. Step back, crescent lunge. Interlace your fingers behind your tail the unusual way. Other thumb is on top, feels odd. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Think about what's going to happen. Airplane with your hands in this shape. Mm -hmm. Right outer hip down. Mm -hmm. Reach your hands forward. Stand up, right knee up, straighten the leg out in front. Conti's not going to talk to me <laughs> after this practice. <laughs> He'll leap. Draw the right outer hip back. So hard, so hard. Put both feet down, chair pose. Inhale here. Exhale, sink your hips as much as you can. Inhale here. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. <clears throat> Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Cobra or Up Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Right leg goes high. Draw the right knee in towards your belly, chest or nose. Hover forward. Step the foot forward. Crescent lunge. Rise all the way up. Draw your right outer hip back. Twist high. Left arm in front. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, frame the front foot, side plank on the left. Deep breath in. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, left leg lifts. Draw the left knee in toward your belly, chest or nose. Set the foot forward, crescent lunge, up you go. Draw your left outer hip back. Right arm in front, twist high. Inhale here. Stay for an exhale. Come back to center on your inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, frame the front foot, side plank on the right. Inhale here. Nice. Chaturanga. Shh. Cobra or up dog. Down dog or a different resting pose, five breaths. So noticing again, like for me, I'd be craving that because we're moving faster. So noticing our craving and our aversion. Maybe you like to hold stuff and you have an aversion toward moving faster. Just notice what is true for you. Is there a preference? And can we lean a little bit toward what is not our preference? Yeah, so it helps us to understand craving and aversion a little bit more. And then when that happens in life, you know, what do we crave? What do we have an aversion towards? Walk or hop to the top. Halfway lift, forward fold, chair pose. Sink as low as you can, inhale, fold forward, exhale, halfway lift, inhale, down dog your way. Right leg high, right knee toward nose, step the foot forward, crescent lunge, inhale, rise, twist high, inhale, center. Warrior two, inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, frame the front foot, side plank on the left. Deep breath in. Chaturanga. Shh. Cobra or up dog. Down dog. Left leg high. Step that foot forward, crescent lunge, rise up, 
Twist high, right arm in front. Inhale, center. Warrior two. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, exalted. Frame the front foot, side plank on the right. Deep breath in. Chaturanga. Cobra or up dog, downward facing dog. Five breaths could be child's pose or another resting pose for you. So finishing this one out, meet in down dog, take a deep breath in, long breath out, walk or hop to the top, halfway lift, inhale, forward fold, exhale, chair pose, stand up mountain, take a deep breath in, long breath out. All right, my dears, arms reach up, inhale, cactus your arms, shine your heart forward, Interlace the fingers behind your tail. And then imagine your thumbs going to the back of your knees. So the heart goes way up, the hips go forward. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Start to bend your knees a little and see how, yeah, exactly. Can you find a root, your knees are bent? Could you imagine you were gonna drop back? I mean, we won't, but can you imagine it, yeah? And then fold forward, let the arms rinse out overhead. Walk your feet to hip distance at least, release your hands. Reach your right arm up to the sky. Take your right hand behind your back in a half bind. Maybe you touch the front of that left thigh. Your left arm might thread under for a bind, yeah? So here in this bind, notice if you wanna go up toward your, your butt. Try to stay at your thigh, yep, and still spin the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then what if you heel-toed that right foot in toward the center? What if you really bent that right knee and came up with the left leg for bird of paradise? Yeah, nice, nice. Yep, beautiful, beautiful, yep. And then put that foot back down and undid your bind. And, you know, maybe hip, feet are hip distance. Maybe they're not a whole lot wider. See what, see what might be useful when we think about rising up into bird. I would think hip distance is, is plenty. <laughs> left, le left arm lifts. Left arm reaches behind your back for a half bind. You can stay there, right? Or the right arm can thread under the leg for a full bind, but we're gonna try to not go up toward the butt too much, yeah? Yeah, spinning the shoulders up, you might stay there, or you might heel toe that left leg in, really, yep, bend the left knee. So that bend is how she's gonna push in to rise up with the right leg in Bird of Paradise, nice. Nice. And then maybe straightening the right leg. Yeah, really good. Put that foot down and undo any bind you have. Yep, standing on the hands here, gorilla pose.
So there's one more little hip strengthener that I would like to do. Chair pose, right ankle, left knee. And we're gonna stay upright today for five, four, three, two, one, lift the right knee up, straighten the right leg out, bring the right leg back, warrior three, and then open half moon, let that beautiful right hip open. Yes, take a deep breath in. Square the hips again now, airplane arms out to either side, right hip goes down, nice. Stand up, draw the right knee up to the belly. Woo! Straighten the right leg out in front and both feet to the floor. Shoo. So strong. Chair pose. Left ankle, right knee, stay upright. Drop the butt, but lift the heart. Yep. Mm -hmm. All the things. If this is likely not comfortable, what is your mind doing? Lift that right knee up or left knee, excuse me, straighten the left leg out. Fly the left leg back, warrior three. And let that beautiful left hip open half moon. Let the left hip square again, airplane arms out to either side, drawing that left hip down, down, down. And then stand up, left knee up to the belly, straighten the left leg out and both feet to the floor. That's all she wrote, arms reach up, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Down dog your way, down dog your way. Right leg goes high, by the grace of God, pigeon pose. So for many of us, squaring our hips is really challenging. It's why poses like warrior one can be so challenging. Most of us naturally wanna open the hips a little. So today has been such hip strengthening and fortifying and a lot of squaring of the hips or leveling the hips, yeah? And so now this is a hip opener. Here, I'm gonna encourage the left outer hip down and the right outer hip back. And then coming on to forearms, if that feels useful. Breathing here and noticing all the things. So pigeon is often a pose that we hold a little longer. That might feel normal to you or common or even comforting. Notice that too. Do you crave to slow down? Do you crave to hold something where you're not standing longer? You know, think of the difference of holding pigeon or holding chair. Or that chair that we held with your right ankle on the left knee. That's basically pigeon. It's a standing pigeon. So when I said it's okay to move towards your cravings with awareness, especially like if you're craving rest, certainly okay to move toward rest. 
Yeah. Just notice when it becomes apathy. Notice when it becomes avoidance. Notice when it becomes escapism. It's okay to move toward action and activity and busyness even, but notice when it becomes a distraction, an addiction, an avoidance. That's all. We're just noticing, not shaming, just noticing. Because when we notice our habits, they don't have as much power over us. And then down dog when you're ready, down dog when you're ready, and you might pedal, you might sway, you might take that right leg up and shake it out. You might do hip circles, you might let your hip wildly open here, all that time squaring the hips. And the left leg lifts, pigeon pose. My encouragement is to draw the left hip back, the right outer hip down. And then coming on forearms maybe, using any props to allow you to feel like you can hold the pose a little. And again, if I'm quiet, what does your mind do? Does it go into the song? Does it daydream? Just notice. And when you're ready, coming out of the pose, maybe shaking that leg back and down dog, opening the hip, letting it really spin, circle, all those things. And then the next pose onto your back. Drawing your knees into your belly, doing a few knee circles one direction and a new few the other. And then knees go to the right in a twist.
And back to center when you're ready. And over to the left. Back to center. And either shoulder stand or a block under the sacrum and legs up to the sky, or you could go put your legs up the wall. So if you're in shoulder stand, you can do plow, embryo, any of those things, or if your legs are up the wall, you might stay. The block is under your sacrum, you might stay for about 10 more breaths. And then we're going to all meet soles of the feet together, knees open. So if your legs up the wall, you could do this at the wall. If you have a block under the sacrum, I would remove it. And we're coming back to where we just began. We're going to hold this pose for about 10 breaths. And then we're going to make ourselves comfortable in Shavasana. And we have some time today. I'm going to read from one of my teachers, Starhawk. Starhawk is, is a witch, an activist, an elder, an author. 
and I'm sure many other identities. And this speaks to our power and our sacred will. In order to hold on to our identities and our purposes, even when under attack, we need to find and anchor our basic sense of core worth. Core is a wonderful word that refers to the center where the life force is held. The core of an apple is the center of an apple, but it is also the place where the seeds lie. From this center of potency, a whole new apple tree can arise. So at our core, we are each the ultimate and highest value. There is no rank or comparison here, no striving or proving. At our core, we are each a deep and potent well of self-creation. When we touch the deepest part of our own self, when we touch our true potency, we touch a place that is far beyond criticism or flattery from others, far beyond any defeat or accomplishment in the outside world. When we touch this place and anchor it so that we can return to it at will, we have created for ourselves the strongest possible defense. We will be able to keep weaving, spinning, and sewing, no matter what others may say or do. Will is an empowering concept. It teaches us that we can make change in our material circumstances. If we put our will, intention, and energy into alignment, sometimes that requires faith. We can't always foresee how material circumstances can change in the direction we want. And maybe they won't, but we will have changed and be acting closer in alignment with what we truly value. Will is not willfulness, not whim, not mere intention to get our way. It is our ability to act as if to set out even if we cannot foresee every step of a journey. The more we exercise our will, the stronger it gets. And the stronger our magical will, the more we are able to serve what is sacred to us, thereby realizing our deepest dreams and desires. So basically what I get out of that reading from Starhawk truly aligns with yoga practice for me. We might not know how to strengthen our will, but we know how to do a yoga practice, to stay with a yoga practice, to tap into that tapas. And in the act of tapping into tapas or practice or staying with something that is not necessarily comfortable at all, but fortifies us and strengthens us, we're practicing strengthening our will for a deeper purpose than to get what we want. In yoga, many times we're brought to the mat at first because we want to get what we want. We want to stick a handstand or do a backbend or, you know, be stronger or thinner or all these other illusions, right? But what keeps us, what makes us stay in the practice is much beyond that. It's because we feel that magic of our will 
and harnessing our mind, noticing our patterns, noticing our aversion and our cravings, our addictions, all of those things, because we don't have any of that on the mat to distract us. At most, we have music or a yoga teacher talking. But all the other distractions are not with us. It's powerful. And it has a profound effect on our life off the mat. When you're ready, coming back to center. And as we rise to a seat, you might place your hands on your belly today. And thank this belly for all it does, for strength and conviction and courage and will, and for things like digestion or being the home for babies or being the home for your projects, the energy that you have to do what you do in the world. All of the things. Thanks, belly. Palms might gather at your heart, bowing our heads. When we fortify ourselves with these kind of practices, it really does help to fortify us in the world so that we can be uncomfortable enough to notice our patterns and then have the sacred will to change what we can change, to move forward in a way that's in alignment with true power, which neither dominates or is oppressed. In the spirit of peace, we say shanti, shalom, salam, amani, maluhia, irini, shiakan, jam, pache, paz. In the spirit of our collective, both truth and liberation, freedom for all, we say ashe, amin, amen, blessed be, kapu aloha, in la catch. Satnam, Namaste, Matakwiasan, Black Lives Matter. <laughs>